Hi guys. So a quick little video here on just a simple little win that I've uh, tried to come up with in regards to my Immersion RC Zugon V2 Pro and frankly any quadcopter that's of a fairly small nature. Um, the reason that I've made this video is basically one of the problems that I was experiencing with the, uh, the Zugon V2 Pro especially since I've uh, put my own gimbal mount and the H3 3D gimbal on the top of it. The problem that I've been experiencing is that because of that you can't put the video transmitter sticking upwards now even when it was sticking upwards it also had the same problem and basically it's all about line of sight the issue is with 5.8 it's nice it's small and it's compact however it relies on line of sight if anything gets in the way of that it can severely reduce the um, the, the kind of the, the clear nature of the actual video so the biggest problem when flying in a configuration like this which is how I've been flying is that there are always going to be certain situations when you your your copter around and something, the body, the battery, everything here, the bulk of it is going to get in the way of the signal, um, you know, especially if you've got an attitude slightly like this whilst you're flying along. And again, if you've got this pointing upwards because you've got it in a standard configuration, you still have that problem potentially when you're pitching along like this and your backside is up in the air, it's going to be potentially blocking the signal. Um, and you'll get some static, and obviously no one likes static, and if you're in certain positions like I've been recently, under bridges and daft things like that, uh, that's going to cause you bad things to happen. So what I wanted to do was come up with an idea of a different placement for it, um, experimental as always with these things, um, and basically what I've uh, come up with is something that makes it pretty much guaranteed to have perfect line of sight as long as you're in the air. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll flip this over and I'll demonstrate exactly what I've done. Nothing particularly new I might add, but it's uh, something that might be of interest to some people and it's a nice cheap easy mod. Okay, so this is the bottom half of my Zugon V2 Pro, and as you can see here, this is what I've done to get around the problem. I have my video antenna here, uh, it goes all the way down here, and then it attaches with a bit of heat shrink to this pole, and into this contraption here, and as you've probably guessed by now, all this is, is a standard retract servo. So what I've done is I've got a retractable video uh, transmitter aerial um, and all you need to do is buy one of these £4.50 I think they are they weigh about 45 grams from Hobby King um, and then all you need to do is know the shaft size and it tends to tell you on the advert so this particular one is a 4mm shaft and to get that shaft out of there you just undo a hex bolt there and a hex bolt there pull it out of there and then all you got to do is find some carbon rod or some fiberglass rod or some wooden rod uh, of the same diameter shove it in there tighten the bolts up and then do what I did which is a dab of heat uh, hot glue just at the end here to make sure that you don't actually lose it if uh, for whatever reason these actually came undone uh, so that's literally about it and all I've then done is behind this heat shrink is a couple of cable ties to cable tie onto the rod um, and then the SMA connector as well so the SMA connector goes down through there and then I'm using an L shape uh, an L bracket SMA connector which I highly advise you probably to get anyway for uh, for the Zugon because it gives you the ability of sticking the uh, the antenna out without having to bend it too badly but that is literally it so nice and simple and of course the idea is as you can see with the length of this is that when it's fully up which I'll show you in a moment um, you've got a full pan 360 degree rotation around it where you've got clean line of sight so in theory as long as you're in the air above you and you've got something like a patch antenna you're going to have a really good line of sight to your video transmitter so you shouldn't have any problems you just have to be a bit careful on how low you fly with it because if it's down you could hit it um, um, but other than that I wanted to make sure that it didn't stick out any further than the battery because when it's down like this because I'm using extended landing gear um, because of my, my Zugong mod uh, basically it just sits like that and I can stick it straight in the case no problems at all get in the air as soon as I'm up in the air hit the button down it comes I've got my antenna as soon as I come back into land I've got my antenna again so uh, a perfect little uh, a little mod and a nice little win there. So I'll do a dry run now and uh, then we'll take it into the field and you can see what it's like when it's actually flying. Okay, so the principle is I now have this hooked up to a spare channel. I'm using Easy UHF. I'm using the four channel receiver, uh, which means basically all I've done is I've assigned um, channel number one is uh, PPM Muxed, which is the PPM channel. But what I then did was I, cha I assigned channel number nine to um, PPM channel number four. So in other words, port number four on the receiver, um, you just plug this servo into port number four of the receiver, then you just set up your transmitter so that channel number nine 
has a switch and that switch becomes this. If you are using Futaba, one thing I would mention, if you're going to do that and you're using Easy UHF, remember if you're using channel number 9, you need to make sure that your trainer port is set to 12 channels, not 8 channels, otherwise it won't see channel number 9 and you'll be sat there wondering why the hell it's not working. Anyway, let's give it a demo. I've got it hooked up to switch SH at the back. And there you go, way too tall to be in the shot at the moment, but you'll see it out in the field working. And we fly like that, of course, with it hanging down, absolutely clear line of sight all the way around through 360 degrees as long as I'm in the air. And when we want to land, we flip it down. So as you can see, here it is out in the field, flying high, or flying fairly low actually, a uh, fairly windy day. But once I've activated it, as you can see, it hangs down a nice amount. Um, you can see how that cable is still a little bit longer than it needs to be. One thing I would mention is this is all just very theoretical from my point of view. Attenuation, I'm well aware, is potentially a problem when using an extension cable. Um, the one thing I would say, though, hopefully, is that by getting it underneath the frame, uh, it's reducing a lot of interference between the NASA and the Easy UHF system as well. So, fingers crossed, it's a nice cheap solution, uh, continues to be transportable. And thanks for watching.